Good morning. We welcome you on this sticky summer day, and we're glad that you're here today. We welcome those of you who are visiting us this morning, invite visitors to sign our guest book. We invite you all to join us at the Lord's table today as we celebrate Holy Communion. I will be at the end of this aisle. Come down from here, I will give you a wafer. All right? If you need a gluten-free wafer, let me know we have those. You'll take your wafer. There'll be a communion assistant on each side with a chalice of wine. Chalices are divided between dark-colored wine, light-colored grape juice. Dip it in either the wine or the grape juice. Eat it. Go back to your seats. Okay? Pastor Stewart will be doing the same thing over here. Come down from this aisle. He will give you a wafer. Gluten-free if you need it. Wine, chalices, dark-colored wine, light-colored grape juice. Dip it in one of those. Eat it, and back you go. All right? Um, it's summertime. It's a little different this time of year. You may actually want to check the donut room to see if there are donuts left over. Um, it's interesting. Fa- Mother's Day is such a big holiday. And all sorts of people bring mom to church. And dad stays home on Father's Day. <laughs> but check the donuts. All right? Check the bulletin. There are a lot of important announcements in there. Uh, full circle food drive ends today. Uh, the pool will disappear. All the food will taken, be taken to the Howard Swamical Food Pantry and also the Pulaski Food Pantry. Remember, there are hunger carts in the entryway every week. So you can bring non-perishable food items anytime and help the hungry in our area. Um, we have a group of mission travelers who will be leaving for West Virginia on Saturday. They are listed in the bulletin today. We're going to ask you to keep them in your prayers, especially Pastor Stewart, who is the wilderness guide to West Virginia. All right, And, and so um, we will have them in our prayers today also. Okay, um, Next Sunday, if you don't go to West Virginia, come back here and we're going to do the Sunday Sunday thing again. The, the men's group is going to uh, supply some ice cream, maybe some strawberries, and, and you can make your own Sunday next Sunday, not just donuts next week, okay? Vacation Bible School is coming up soon. It's not too early to register. There are forms on the tables in the gathering space, and also you can um, register to help with Bible School using that same form. If you are a Facebook or an Instagram user, you can check in to Peace Lutheran Church this morning, and you will help supply bricks for schools today. That's the cause on Causley. Um, In the gathering space, there are two uh, baskets on each side of the gathering space. There are devotion books in there. The devotion books for July, August, and September are available. You can pick up yours. And also, uh, there are bigger ones much more colorful for families. You can pick those up today, too. All right? And then finally, for those of you who are fathers and all of you who give fatherly care, happy Father's Day. All right? Now, give some care right now. Um, do it by getting up and saying good morning to the people around you, okay? And I knew I was going to do it. I forgot one of the important announcements. Uh, the, one of the sets of flowers today are in celebration of Tom and Joyce Byer's 50th anniversary. They're sitting back there. Congratulations, Tom and Joyce. And our opening hymn today is This Is My Father's World.
We continue with the brief order for confession and forgiveness. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. We take a moment to prepare our hearts for confession. Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sin through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. A hymn of praise is for the fruit of all creation. you. Let us pray. O God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Help us to be branches of your tree and nurture our growth so that others may find there is room in your kingdom for all people. Give us courage to bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. You may be seated. We'll continue with the Bible reading. Our Bible reading for today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4. Jesus is telling his followers two, disciple, or two parables. Jesus also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground, and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. 
Jesus also said, With what can we compare the kingdom of God, or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which when sown upon the ground is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches, branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, Jesus spoke the word to them as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables, but he explained everything in private to his disciples. Here ends our reading. Boys and girls, if you'd like to come on up for the children's sermon. Dummy. Hey, buddy. Morning, guys. Coming on up. Couple more, Grady and Isaac. Good morning, guys. How you doing today? Good. 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 How's summer going? Because it's summer. Summer's good, right? Yeah. yeah. Parents, is summer good too? Wow, you guys are really alive. Uh huh. I'm worried about you guys too. Summer's a good thing, right? Now, here's the thing. Today's especially a pretty good day too, because something's happening in summer, and today's a very special day. You know what it is? Father's Day. Father's Day. Yeah. You guys do something special for your dad? I don't know, because these two are right mine, so I don't know what they've done for me yet. But uh, anybody else? You guys do some nice stuff for your dad today? Well, really, they probably want just you to say I love you and to be nice, right? That's probably one big thing. Or maybe you want, like, one of these other things. Summer's also another time for cool things. Like, do you guys have fires in the back backyard? Or do you guys ever have a fire, right? You guys ever do that? And you ever roast something on the fire? What do you guys roast on the fire? What do you guys roast? Marshmallows or hot dogs. Do you guys like hot dogs? Yeah. And what do you put on hot dogs? You put the red stuff. What's the red stuff? Ketchup. Ketchup. And mustard. you put this stuff. Do you guys like mustard? No. Yeah. No, no. Like you it. do? Okay. One girl this morning was like, ew, mustard? That's gross. Some people like it and some don't. Now, here's the thing. Where does mustard come from? Do you guys know mustard where seed. mustard Well, a plant, right? But first, you're right. To get to the mustard, you got to have a plant, right? But do you know how big a mustard seed is? It's really tiny. Like, almost like the size of something like this. See how small that is? And isn't it kind of tiny? Look at that. See that? I know. It's not yet, buddy. Just leave it. See? Nah, uh, uh, uh. See that small? Jesus told a story about a mustard seed that was really, really small. And Jesus said, God's love, God's kingdom, is kind of like the tiniest seeds. And do you know what you do with a seed? What do you do with a seed, you guys? Yeah, you dig a hole, you put it in there, you cover it up with dirt, you put some water on it, and then some sunshine comes, some more rain, and then it grows and grows and grows into a big old shrub, a mustard shrub, apparently. That's what happens from something as small as this. And Jesus told that story so that you guys could know about God's love that starts really, really small. Do you know God's love starts really small? Do you know how it starts? I tell you guys something. Wait, are you guys loved by God? Does God love you guys? What about you old people? Does God love you too? That's something that we say, and it's kind of small. But when it goes in your ear, you hear it. It goes into your heart and your brain, and it, like, it's like it's planted there. And you know what happens when you hear it, and you hear it, and you hear it, and it grows and grows and grows? You remember that God loves you, and then you love other people. That's how God's kingdom is. It starts off very, very small, and it grows, just like a mustard seed. And we use mustard like this, but it grows into something much, much better. God's love for you guys. Now, here's the other thing, okay? You guys know this isn't actually a seed, right? You guys know what this thing is? Lego. It's a little Lego. And I like Legos a lot, right? Okay, now it's the smallest. This is the smallest Lego you can get, the smallest size. And here's the thing. If you go to the Green Bay Botanical Gardens right now, you'll see where they can use all these little Legos to make big, big plants and things out of Legos. It's pretty, I know, right? I'm pretty excited about it too. No way, you're kidding. No, I'm not kidding. It's going to be awesome, right? Okay, so that's the thing. You guys can use that. Remember, if you go to the Green Bay Botanical Gardens, you can remember something small that grows into those big plants, just like God's love is in your heart and grows into something really, really big. Okay, well, I hope you guys do some nice things for your dad. Be nice to them today on Father's Day and every day, just like your mother's. Yes, I know. And we're going to pray, okay? How do we pray, guys? Can we fold our hands? And we close our eyes? We open our ears and our hearts. Thank you, Jesus, that you told stories about small things like mustard seeds that grow into big things. And you told that story 
to tell us about how your love starts in us and it grows. We are thankful for your love. We pray you would help us to remember that and help us to share your love wherever we may be. We pray this in Jesus' holy name and all God's children said, Amen. Thanks for coming up, you guys. And head back to your seats. Thanks, buddy. I know, that'd be fun. Well, brothers and sisters in Christ, grace and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Jesus told stories. He told some really good stories. He told lots of different stories. Time and time again, you look to the Gospels, and he's telling stories about a certain kind of thing, a certain way to be, a certain way to see the world. All right? Now, here's the thing. Jesus told stories about this. And I'm going to have this slide pop up every once in a while during the sermon, and I want to invite you as a group to read the words together. Do you guys think you can do that? Okay, let's practice. Ready? The kingdom of God is like... Now, Jesus told lots of stories. He told them, and he told them about certain things. Now, we began the the reading here with his first one. He told them about seeds. How many of you are farmers? Mm, One or two of us. Yeah, see, there were a few of us out there, but there aren't many. See, Jesus told stories in his day about things that related to the most amount of people. He told stories of growing seeds, which made sense. And it still makes sense to us today, because how many of us have gardens, or have had gardens, or had to pull weeds as a child in the garden, right? Okay, get it? Yeah, we've done that. Okay, so we get it. We understand that. Jesus told a story about this, about how you put seeds down, and it grows up. You sleep, you get up, and the seeds grow. Is a growing plant amazing, everybody? It is. It's an amazing thing. Those of you who are alive today, you are alive because of a growing plant. So are they amazing? Yes. That's what Jesus was saying about the plant, that God's love is like that. His kingdom is like that. Okay? And he also told another one. Ready? The kingdom of God is like the mustard seed. You guys heard the the children's sermon, so you know. Mustard seeds are how big? That big. Really tiny. And Jesus told this story to farmers and people who did that, and they said, "Ah, I remember. I remember there's a mustard bush over there. It gets really big, but it starts off very, very what? Tiny, very small. That's what God's kingdom is like. Jesus told stories all the time, and he told them because he wanted to relate to them a way of seeing, a way of understanding the world, a way, a perception, a lens through which you could see what God's kingdom and God's grace and God's presence were all about. Jesus told story about growth, about love, forgiveness, care, about truth, about life, and about God. He told all these great stories. And I have to tell you, I love those stories, and I see actual parables all over the place today. I'm going to be sharing with you several stories that I've experienced this week, things I've found, different videos, because this phrase, the kingdom of, wait, ready? The kingdom of God is like, didn't stop just with the Bible. Those stories that Jesus told are timeless, and they can, we t- continue to hear them and read them today. The themes are still there, and I've seen them all over the place. So I'm going to share some with you. Remember the phrase, everybody. Let's do it again. The kingdom of God is like. Here's the first one. During Bible study this week, one of our members said, Pastor Stewart, I think the kingdom of God is like my son who coaches youth, uh, youth sport. And, he, and I'm like, okay, tell me the story. He said, he doesn't just teach the kids how to win because it's important to understand the game and the mechanics, but he teaches them how to win graciously and how to lose graciously. He teaches them not just how to win the sport, but he teaches them how to be a person. And I'm like, that's a pretty good story, Lee. I like that one. I'm going to use that. Okay, you know. Uh, So, But it is. The kingdom of God is like a coach who teaches his players not just how to win, but how to be a person. Is that a good story, everybody? And have you ever experienced that story? I hope you have. Because that's how it should be. All right? The kingdom of God is like a kindergarten class in Texas.
Now, this week, again, I was searching and searching for different... There are so many. Is there so much negative news right now? I shouldn't say now. Is there a lot of negative news that you can see? There is. There's so much negativity and hard things out there. And yet Jesus told stories of positiveness, of growth, of family, of grace. And they're out there like this. Is that a good story, everybody? God's kingdom is like a kindergarten class in Texas where the teacher responds to class shootings and to negativity and horrible things by teaching her kids to stand and say good morning and to shake hands. It can be as simple as that. Is she going to change the world? I don't know. But for those little kids, they start their day off with respect and with grace and kindness. Is that a good story, everybody? It is. The kingdom of God is like... Have you ever watched America's Got Talent? Has anyone ever seen this show? If you haven't, you're missing something that's pretty fun and a little weird. (laughs) You get some kind of strange acts and some different fun things. But always, if you would search online, if you go to YouTube and search America's Got Talent Gold Buzzer, and you will see some of these acts and some of these stories of these people. And that's, whenever I see it, I'm like, I'm just a blubbering mess. <laughs> you know, you've seen these stories, these tales. The one I'm thinking of specifically this last week was a father of six adopted children. They're all foster children. He, he and his wife adopt them all. And, he, and they said, you're a good singer, Dad. I think he's like a worship leader in his church. So he gets in front of the group. He makes it through that. And he's talking to the group. And yeah, I wanted to, t- to tell my kids that if I can do it, they can do anything too. So he stands up there and he sings, and you're like, oh my gosh, he's got this great voice, this thing that had to pour out of him. And then what happens, of course, even Satan himself, Simon Cowell, goes over, right? You guys know, understand Satan, right? He goes over, he gives him some words, he says, I can't do anything, and he hits the gold. And you're like, ah, it's just this amazing, amazing thing. Someone has this great gift that they cannot help but share with whatever circumstances, they get on this show and people say, yes, that is an inspirational gift. Is that a good story, everybody? If you haven't watched them, YouTube it later, not right now. Okay, let's just say that, okay? They're great stories. America's got talent. The kingdom of God is like that in some ways. The kingdom of God is like an eight-year-old in Georgia. one gets me emotional every time I watch it. I'm like, oh gosh, right there. Gets you right in the feels. You know what I'm saying? Um, God's kingdom is like an eight-year-old who said to his mom while they were driving in the truck, stop mom. There's a woman over there who needs to help and I can't help. I've got to do it. So he gets out and he helps her. Did he do it so he could receive a hundred bucks? Wow, that was kind of cool, right? No, he did it because it's right. She was struggling and he just felt it in himself to get out of the car and to go help someone in need. Is that a good story, everybody? Yes, it is. I think Jesus would have told that story about a young boy who helps someone in need because he knew it was right. That's what God's kingdom can be like. The kingdom of God is like. Now, Pastor Don and I are are blessed in a lot of ways to be with people through certain things. This past week, I was with um, one member and their whole family as we gathered in their um, hospital room before surgery. We're sitting there waiting for the surgery, and I think all of them were there in a 10 by 10 room. It was kind of loud, (laughs) but they were all there. They were a little scared. They were a little worried. They weren't sure what the results of the surgery would be, but they were still all there, laughing, crying together in the face of the unknown. Is that God's kingdom, everybody? It is. And who knows, someday you may be the person in that bed with your family around you, praying, laughing, 
crying with you. And you may, I hope, someday be that person around someone who you love and care about, being present with them, struggling with through them, and all those things to be present with them and all those things. Is that a good story, everybody? That's God's kingdom too. It is. The kingdom of God is like a pizza place in Philadelphia. Okay, just wait. I have to tell you, I could have done like 18,000 videos. Okay, just so you know. These are like the top three, okay? A pizza place in Philadelphia. I've been homeless on and off for the past five years. So it really sucks. But at least I know I can look forward to 11 o'clock when I know I can get some fresh hot pizza. The first day the Pay It Forward program kind of started was when a gentleman walked in and he asked if a homeless person ever came in short and he offered to pre-purchase a slice of pizza for the next homeless person. So he gave me a dollar, I ran out, got post-it notes, put one up on a wall behind the register, told more people about it. Eventually, a couple days later, a homeless person came in, he had like 65 cents on him and we told him to just keep the change. It was already paid for. He redeemed one of the pre-purchased slices. So uh, now we've given away almost 10,000 slices of pizza. I feel, well, you know, welcome. I feel like, you know, like I almost bought the slice, but I know I didn't. I try to donate at least like $5 a week, you know, and it's so funny because today I left my wallet and everything home. And I was, I have 78 cents in my pocket and I just came out like, I'm a little short. They were like, okay, don't worry about it. And that's a really great feeling. You know, so I can imagine how the homeless people feel. And um, it's just a great thing. And the pizza is good. I'm from New York, so you know I know what pizza is. Before I opened up Roses, I just worked at a desk job in New York. You know, I showed up every morning, did some computer work, and then, you know, went home. Pretty regular stuff. I wanted to kind of do something new. I saw the success of the, the dollar pizza stores throughout uh, New York. So I thought I'd, I'd open this place up and uh, try my hand at it. I've been three years off the streets. I was seven years homeless myself as a, as a veteran, you know, and I finally got myself out of the rut, got myself an income, and, and I want to pay it forward, you know. Oh, just yesterday there was a guy that came in. He'd been homeless for like eight months, and I hadn't seen him for like three months. And I'm like, yo, where you been at? <laughs> He's like, yeah, 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 I'm, I'm working now. Figured I'd, I'd buy a slice for someone else. I was like, that was awesome. Just a couple days prior, I had been like, man, I hope that guy's okay. And it turns out, you know, he's killing it. We don't always have a chance to come in and get fresh hot food whenever we can. And for people to donate money, and, you know, towards slices of pizza for us, like, really made a change in Philadelphia. In a city with a poverty rate that is higher than all other big cities comparable to it, to see such a show of compassion and, and brotherly love is, is really it's inspiring. I think it's pretty cool how powerful something this kind of small and simple can be. Hmm. It's fun how simple and small and yet powerful that can be. Is that a good story of the kingdom, everybody? It is, isn't it? And the hard part is all these stories, the kingdom of God is like, all these stories, Jesus told these stories, we hear them, we see them, and they're all important and good for us to know and realize. But it's because of this story that Jesus told that we can tell our story. Because we gather together as God's people today to remember the ultimate story that he did in this, in the cross. The kingdom of God is like a man who was innocent, who did so many great things, who healed, who taught, who loved, but who was threatening to those in power. So they killed him. But it was his choice to do that because of his love for you today so that you can know you are forgiven, so that whatever struggles, whatever things you're going through today, whatever hard stresses are there, you are not alone. Are you loved by God, everyone, today? 
Are you forgiven? Yes, you are. Now, here's the hard part. Jesus told stories, and he gave that ultimate story with his life on the cross for you. What's your story? What will you do with that knowledge? What will you do with the truth that you have not earned God's grace, that you do not deserve it? And yet, because of Jesus and of his cross, you are forgiven and you are loved, and you are never alone. I want to open a pizza place. How about you guys? Would that be fun? Yes, that'd be kind of fun. I want to help older people who are in need upstairs. I want to hold the door open for someone and go against my normal need for them to say thank you. Are you that kind of a person? I can't help it, right? Yep, I want to just open the door just because. I want to give to people who are in need because that's the right thing to do. And I want to do all those things because Jesus loves me. Because I have been given grace upon grace. And we don't have to all do huge things. Mother Teresa said this. She said, not all of us can do great things, but we can do small things with great love. May we all do those things like a smile. That's a small thing that can go a long way to someone who's working maybe too many hours at Walmart, at a low-paying job that maybe just keeping the ends meet, smile to them. May you can give to someone who is in need because maybe they're down on their luck. Maybe you can be a person who can love and care and share and be the kind of people who can be thankful for every gift that we've been given and shine that truth to those around you. May we all be humble because have any, have any of you earned God's love and do any of you deserve it? No. We all receive this grace of Jesus. We all are receiving this grace of God. And God calls us to trust him and to give back out of what we've been blessed with. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we are thankful that you told stories. Stories about the kingdom of God, of love, of grace, of your mercy, of forgiveness, and of light, and of your love. We are thankful for all these other stories in our lives that we can see that shine the light of your love through those stories to us. And we thank you ultimately that you gave your life for us so that we can know forgiveness, your light, and your love. We pray you would help our stories, our lives, to share the light of your love, however we may and wherever we are. We pray this in Jesus' holy name and all God's people said, Amen. Our next song is As the Grains of Wheat. God plants the seed of faith into us, and we can grow and share it today using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated, and at this time we'd have Leroy come forward with his parents and his sponsors. Sponsors over here, parents over here. Big sister can come too if she wants. Here she comes. Hi, Lola. Hi, Leroy. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. Water. Water is what God uses to wash and nourish the earth. It is what we use to wash, nourish, and refresh ourselves. And God uses water to cleanse us spiritually and to initiate us as Christians. Baptism is the means by which God the Father creates new daughters and sons. In the waters of baptism, we are joined to the death and resurrection of our Lord. Born again by water and the Holy Spirit, we are made members of the body of Christ, the Church. Living in fellowship with Him and His people, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Who presents this child to receive the sacrament of baptism? Will the parents, sponsors, and congregation respond, We do. do. You have the responsibility to follow through in our Lord's command, to teach him to observe all he has commanded. It is also your privilege and responsibility to teach him the Ten Commandments, the Creed, and the Lord's Prayer, and that as he grows in years, you place in his hands the Bible, bring him to services in God's house, and provide for his instruction in the Christian faith. So continuing the covenant promise of his baptism and in fellowship with the church, he may grow up as a faithful child of God forever. Do you promise that you will faithfully care for him and help him in every way as God gives you opportunity so that he may bear witness to the faith we profess? Will you strive to live the Christian lifestyle of love, forgiveness, and service day by day as an example to this child? If so, answer, yes, by the help of God. Profess your faith in Christ Jesus. Reject sin. Confess the faith of the church, the faith in which we baptize. Do you renounce all the forces of evil, the devil, and all his empty promises? If so, answer, I do. I do. Come here, Leroy. My big guy. We're good, we're good, we're good, we're good. I now take your child from you to baptize him. We are baptizing this morning by the direct command of our Lord who said, Go to all people everywhere and make them my disciples. Baptize them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In baptism, he'll be given the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and eternal life. He'll be adopted by God, become a Christian, and be received as a member of God's family, the Church. Leroy, Eugene, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. All done. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has caused your rebirth and adoption in the kingdom of God by water and the Holy Spirit, and has forgiven you all your sin, strengthen you with his grace for life with him forever. Amen. God's peace be with you. Receive the sign of the cross upon your brow and upon your breast. In token from now on you shall know the Lord the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his suffering. I will return to you God's child. He is no longer yours to do with as you see fit. It is your privilege and responsibility to raise children of God. So remember to do what God wants you to do. Remember to call upon God to help you raise his child. That's Leroy. Water was kind of cold. This is a very warm head, by the way. And it's lukewarm water. But the seed was planted, all right? The seed that gives him the promise that God has his love in there, and it's going to grow. And parents and sponsors and family and congregation are going to help that happen, right? You hiding from them? Yeah. You can do that again. There we go. There we go. 
doesn't want to see him. I don't blame him. Sometimes I want to close my eyes when I look out there too. Here you go, Mom. Here, we'll give that. You want to play with that? You want that little one? There you go. Okay. That's for Leroy. That's for Tabitha. That's for Joshua. This is for Mom. There he goes. Even though it's Father's Day, you give it to Mom. Thank you. All right, you guys head on back. You stand for the prayers, please. In our prayers today, we'll remember Vicki Beyer, who is in Freighted Hospital in Milwaukee, Avery Reeb, who is at Aurora Hospital, Jean Hobbick, who's at Grand Care, Mary Jo Gorman, who's recovering from surgery at home. We'll remember the family of Judy Hoffman. Judy died last week. We'll remember Heidi and Jeff Krieger and their family. Heidi, Heidi's father died last week. We'll remember Becky Bauer and Jeff Heeb and their family. Becky's mother died last week. Today in prayer, we'll celebrate Leroy's baptism. We'll remember our mission travelers, and we will think of fathers and all who give fatherly care. I'll end the petition by saying, Hear us, O God. Your response is, Your mercy is great. Filled with the Holy Spirit, we join with the church in every place, praying for the world that God so loves. Most high God, your kingdom is like a noble tree, whose boughs and branches give shade and rest to the peoples of the earth. Make your church a nesting place for all who need your peace and healing. Hear us, O God. O Most High, you speak and your word is accomplished. Speak to the leaders of the nations so that they might end cycles of violence, giving people everywhere tranquility and peace. Hear us, O God. O Most High, we ask your blessing on Leroy and all the newly baptized, so that he and all your children may grow in your love. Bless our mission travelers as they grow in their love by sharing your love with others. Hear us, O God. O Most High, bless fathers and all who give fatherly care with such love and faithfulness that children will flourish and grow in uprightness and joy. Bless those who long to be fathers and those for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O God. O Most High, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Bring your healing blessing into the lives of those who suffer illness or any kind of need. Today we especially remember Vicki, Avery, Jean, Mary Jo, Judy's family, Heidi and Jeff and their family, and Becky and Jeff and their family. Hear us, O God. O Most High, hear these prayers we bring before you in our hearts. Hear us, O God. By the sure guidance of your Holy Spirit, O God, we lift up our prayers in trust and thanksgiving through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may be seated. We'll receive your offering.
If you can, please stand for the offering response. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness you have blessed us with these gifts. With them we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made for the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And let us pray with confidence in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated.
you can, please stand for the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Thankful hearts and voices raise. upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Closing hymn is, Go, my children, with my blessing.